Welcome back to Pro Education. This is Zed. Today we're coming back with XL, officially coming previously known as PIC or PIC. Now I divided this video into multiple parts. First off, due diligence, and then moving into technical analysis. If you'd like to skip to that, you'll find the link to that in the description below or in the comments where you can there. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow. Subscribe, notifications on. Let's jump right into it. So on the due diligence part, I covered this one extensively, but I'm not gonna bore you here. I'm gonna barely, I'm gonna be touching here uh, the important points for me, and then what I have uncovered, especially relating to January 20 with the Biden plan, and some of the things that we might expect relating to P uh, Excel. So Excel, just if you're first time you're watching this video and you don't want to watch the previous one in the description below, it has four different technologies have the Excel hybrid system that basically increases the miles per gallon by creating a hybrid system and then you got the plug-in system which is basically a plug-in system that uh, either you have it as still as a hybrid or as a fully electrical system so that is massive uh, a plug-in system in general is a fully electrical vehicle then you got your XL link which is basically tracks the metrics for your fleet uh, the amount of carbon dioxide emissions it has reduced etc Excel grid is is charging stations in layman's term now, next thing here is some of the latest news that we have. Well, they are officially XL on NYSE. So, amazing, we have our own ticker. And one of the previous ones that I did cover was the expanding solution portfolio for the F550 chassis to meet strong customer demand. And then the one before it is the, the pilot program with utility fleet, the utilities incorporation for its utility fleet. And that was massive. And you basically, it really opens the gates for other uh, customers. Now, the next thing we're looking at here, uh, yes, we do have around, sorry, the XL, but we do have around $350 million in cash proceeds. And what does that mean to myself? Well, I did try to go through their financials. Their financials is a little bit messed up right now, just because uh, we're still not in that stage where it does reflect everything correctly. Currently, they would basically go on and pay off their entire liabilities per se, but of course, we're looking into after the merger, the numbers need to still to be crunched in and needs to be accurate. But I do expect that at least all or a big chunk of their liabilities and debt could be paid by that $350 million. Now, they mentioned what they're actually looking for for the funds. They say the funds are expected to be used for advanced Excel fleet's position as a leader in fleet electrification through the development of new products including the all-electric class 7-8 solutions, further developments of companies Excel grid charging infrastructure, division, complete, etc., etc., electrification services. If you don't know what class 7-8 solutions are, that is massive, and they did cover it in their presentation previously. And so if you don't know where the presentation is, you would go to present uh, investors and scroll all the way down to their presentation. Now, they do mention what class 7-8 vehicles they're Looking for that semi tractors, refuse trucks, transit bus, and tow truck. And with the transit bus here, this is where I want to come in. in a second, just give me one minute. I'm going to complete this one. So we already covered the F550, 550 uh, ch electrification chases. Now, with the buses, transit buses, now let's go on and take a quick look into uh, Biden's plan. So, one of the things that he says is the transit, he wants to provide every American city with 100,000 or more residents with high quality zero emission public transport option that is massive because if you're able to create that electrification system as excel fleet is aiming for with smaller budget for let's say areas where they can get we're not talking about new york city at least we're talking about areas where there might be a little bit of budget issues you can perhaps update your existing fleet or carry on a second generation or a second use fleets with that modification of the electrification system. And that is massive. And so your emissions public transport, there you go. Excel fleet can actually provide into there. And that is one of the things. Now, the next thing here is incentives, a rapid de de uh, deployment of clean energy innovations across the economy, especially in communities most impacted by climate change. And some of the things that they're actually going far for to ensure that the U.S. achieves 100% clean energy will probably be things incentives related to hybrid and electrification of vehicles, especially in classes 4 to 8. Uh, and if you don't know what class 4 to 8s are, basically go all the way from step van, school buses, box trucks, bucket trucks, and the ones I just mentioned. So that is something I have in my mind. Now, the next thing here as well is 
out of their nine key plans for Joe Biden, uh, making historical investment in clean energy innovation. I'm not sure exactly how Excel Fleet would benefit out of that, but still is a positive thing to see. But accelerate the deployment of clean energy throughout the economy. And that is something massive, especially by 2030, where there is a massive uh, agenda there for clean energy. Now, I know it sounds almost like a campaign, and uh, we're, I'm not trying to cover that. I'm just basically, I apologize if this is hitting you in terms of off being offended by it, but January 20, Biden seems to be going to office, and we're just looking into what policies might change to affect our investment. And so far, all is positive. Now, the next thing we want to cover here before we go into the technical analysis is this picture that I shared a while ago. And so usually what you see is after the ticker is official, you start seeing a little bit of resistance. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen on Excel. So far, the left has somewhat occurred and uh, in almost an earring kind of shape where it, it actually did occur. So what we need to look at here is, well, is the left, is the right going to occur? And uh, here quickly, I'm going to take off this picture. And I'm going to show you this picture here. And you get to see the initial letter of intent, it jumps, it lowers down, and that massive jump, dated Excel, and then dropping so we get to see that already now before moving on towards technical analysis please make sure to subscribe to this channel because it helps me know that you guys would love more contents like that a lot of you folks are really amazing watching my videos constantly but haven't subscribed yet so please consider now we also have a discord that is basically we chat over things like this all day it's more of a chat room feel free to join it it's in the description now let's jump right into technical analysis Technical analysis gives you a bit of perspective on the ecology of traders behind it and the price action. So MACD here, you get to see a really strong movement. Momentum is pulling back a little. Now, the ADX here, that is where things get interesting. Above 50, that's where you start seeing negative reversals. We're actually on the way with the red candle. Now, William percent R is overbought in this situation. Moving averages are extremely bullish. Now, we need to look a little bit into a one-day perspective, just because things are moving a little bit too fast. We hit 35 bucks right now where it looks like we're just dropping down 80x is the same thing for the one day macd looks like it's retracting a little and that's danger momentum looks like it's dropping and the willing percent r is somewhere still not even oversold even with that massive from 35 bucks to 27 almost eight bucks it's still not oversold still closer to neutral actually it's closer to overbought closer to neutral so that's one thing to consider. Moving averages are extremely bullish, but the trading action zone is between 20 and 17. That is where your reversals are more likely. You'll have a bit of room to fall there. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Now, let's do a two hour perspective. Here's where things get a little bit interesting. It isn't a moving average band. I'm oh, sorry, moving uh, trading action zone. It stays above there above 26. Low 26, that's where reversals are really unlikely. Now, the next thing here, moving averages are still bullish. Uh, they're closing in a little, so that's a little bit bearish. MACD is actually going really bearish on the two-hour perspective, and the momentum has gone negative. Million percent R is highly oversold. ADX is retracting. So on a two-hour perspective, it's showing a really heavy pullback. And, you know, we're seeing it. We're, we're not blind with that 10%. Now, volumes have been dropping down. But one thing to look at is the moving average. And if the moving average band here is actually increasing upwards, you can expect that it still pushes further. It's expecting to trade on the top at 1959, in the middle 1781, and in the bottom at 1602. Now, the next thing we're looking at is the stochastic fast and stochastic. The stochastic fast is and slow are both showing that there is a potential here for a pullback coming down. Uh, now, at what point that pullback is going to happen? That's where we need to look a little bit into, let's say, Fibonacci retracements and supports and resistance. Taking it from all the way from the 950. You get to see the next support on the Fibonacci retracements is sitting at the 2520. Below there, 2225. Below there, 1924. And below there, 15. Significant resistance. The only two are there, 2954 and 35 bucks. That is where we count on Fibonacci retracements. Now, quickly moving on and doing, let's say, a two hour perspective. On a price line action, the current support is sitting at 2686. Next support below there, we're looking at 520 and then 2103. Now, the really significant one in my perspective, 19 bucks one and then the 1793, followed by the 1680. That is where probably it's going to accumulate around this region here, bottom. 
Now, significant resistances here, we're looking down, uh, sorry, up to 2974, 3103, 3269, 3370. Now, Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, you know, for me, in my perspective, I really would love to see this one hit new highs. 100 bucks, I love this one. Now, one thing to consider is that this one is actually a little bit falling right now. If everything that, for almost every other SPAC that we the hype still dies after the ticker has been changed. And I'm not saying dies completely. The hype itself, so something new, something exciting. I do think that it's going to accumulate, but it's not going to accumulate probably at 27. It's going to accumulate just a little bit below. Maybe 2383, maybe 1999. Uh, I have no position currently in it, and I'm waiting for it to show accumulation. What I'm saying accumulation is a stabilization in the price. Right now, it's a little bit looking a little bit bearish and dropping, even though I really, really believe in the stock, and I do think amazing things. We covered the DD in this one, and it looks solid. I just need stable zone where I can consider putting in my money, and these start phasing in. First entry could be, let's say, 2354. That is one of the supports, right? And then the next one could be 2036. And then the next one, if it drops, 1771. That way, you're not stuck in with all your position at 30 or 27 or 28. You're phasing in. Hey, if it jumps up, you may profit. Drops down, you average down. That is my perspective, but I do expect a pullback. What do you think about the sticker? Mention down in the comments. Please subscribe and like. You have a wonderful day.